Hello friends, it's me, and today, Century Burger. Let's check out Food Theory. This burger is older than your grandfather. From the Food Series, together, let's go. Mm, let's go. This burger is over 100 years old, or at least the grease used to cook it is. A burger joint in Memphis claims the grease they use to make their burgers is the exact same one from when they opened their doors in 1912. But I have to ask, how is it even possible to still use grease from that long ago? And what's even the point? Today, we're going to find out if this century-old grease is the real deal, or if they're just being slick to sell some burgers. Food theory. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show with the same great flavor, four years running. But that's not- Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory. Nothing compared to this burger joint that claims to be using the exact same grease to cook their burgers for over a hundred years. In Memphis, Tennessee, Dyer's Burgers is famous for the grease that they've been using to cook their burgers since the owner, Elmer Dyer, first opened its doors back in the early 1900s. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, Bleh. but you might also be thinking, why would anyone choose to use the same grease for a century? Well, it turns out it was completely by accident. When Dyer's Burgers first opened up, they made their burgers with specially seasoned ground beef that would create extra grease when cooked. That was part of their whole shtick. But one night, a cook forgot to change the grease in the pan and ended up cooking burgers in it the next day. Instead of getting a stern talking to from his boss, the mistake was what actually would put Dyer's Burgers on the map, since customers asked for the manager, but only to say that it was the best burger they'd ever had in their life. And Dyer was like, yeah, we totally meant to do that. So rather- Yeah, we totally meant to do that. Mm-hmm than throwing out the grease and the cook who forgot to clean the pan, they decided to lean into it to keep customers coming back. And they still use the same cooking grease for their burgers today. And yes, you heard that 100% correctly. Same grease, different century. Why has this establishment not been shut down by the FDA for using grease older than both the film and play grease? Well, according to the owners, they make sure it's safe. The grease is seasoned and filtered every day, but it still has the molecules from 1912 in the grease. Same molecule. At least, that's what they claim. But after years and years of filtering and refreshing it, are the original molecules still present in the grease, like they say? It's the ship of Theseus problem. If you're not familiar with the paradox, it's a famous philosophical thought experiment based in Greek mythology. Essentially, a king, Theseus, had a ship that every year was taken on a pilgrimage. Obviously, as the years passed, they would have to do maintenance on the ship and replace any broken or moldy parts. Philosophers, the fun ruiners they are, pose the question, at what point is this ship no longer the original ship? Basically, if you slowly replace or change the parts of something over time until everything has been changed, is it still the same object? Marvel actually used this question in place of a fight between the two Visions and WandaVision, one of my favorite showdowns that don't involve punchy punchy boom pals. So we're gonna- mm -hmm. And the conclusion is, maybe it is the rot that makes the ship the ship of Theseus. Hmm? apply the ship of Theseus problem to this grease to hopefully find an answer to two simple questions. One, is this thing even safe to eat? And two, is it truly the same grease? It's our very own ship of greasiest. <laughs> to start things off, the idea of reusing cooking grease isn't unique to Dyer's Burger. For example, bacon has a distinct smoky flavor and produces a lot of grease when cooked. You can store it and reuse it in other dishes to impart that flavor, like in your greens or rice or anything you want to give a delicious bacony complexity to. It's also a way you can add a meaty flavor without having meat in the dish itself, like in soups or dressings. People even use bacon fat to season a cast iron pan for the flavor, but also to help maintain its nonstick quality. Southern style cooking is pretty much 90% bacon grease. Brownies, cornbread, scrambled eggs, you name it. Ugh, I knew I shouldn't have skipped breakfast before recording this. <laughs> but it's also not just the grease itself. You can even season the meat you're cooking to help infuse the flavor of the seasoning into the grease. And this is exactly what Dyer's Burgers is doing, seasoning the burger meat so when it's cooking, it goes into the grease, which is then used to cook more burgers. So patties are basically seasoned twice for a stronger, more defined taste. It's no wonder people love their burgers. There are even historical uses of taking oil or food from another dish and then cooking meals in that same oil. Perpetual stew, also known as forever soup or hunter stew, is a pot where food is cooked, but the pot is never empty. Liquids and ingredients are replenished and added to the pot, allowing you to keep cooking the same food for decades longer than if you didn't replenish the ingredients. This method creates a deep flavor of the food being stewed in the pot and allows the food to remain safe to eat due to the constant cooking. It was super common in medieval Europe where inns would keep a cauldron of stew simmering to make sure guests would always have food and just kind of using whatever ingredients were on hand at the time. And just like perpetual stews can go 
on and on doing the same thing over and over, it's easy to fall into the same old routine at the gym. Now, I'm someone that loves going to the gym. It's my way to get out of my head and move around, which is definitely needed after hours of research and writing theories. But sometimes the last thing I want to do is have to think about what exercises to do, and that honestly saps motivation like no other. That's why I use the sponsor for today's video, Train Well. Train Well, that's a sponsor. Awesome. Let's you personalize your workouts congrats, and schedules congrats. with a real Thank human you. expert so that you can take all the guesswork out of your fitness. And I mean all the guesswork. Not familiar with an exercise? The app shows you how to do it. Not sure what days to work out? Your trainers got you. They also customize guided workouts for your goals, schedule, and injuries. My favorite thing was getting to meet my trainer on a video call to really get into the weeds of what I'm training for, what I like to do, and where they can help me take things to the next level without changing my entire day up. Let me tell you, Justin, my trainer, knows exactly how to adapt my workouts based on the challenges that come with being a busy host. Host. Sometimes I don't have access to a full gym, but I also don't want my strength training to suffer. So he makes sure that I can get the workout that I want with whatever equipment I have, whether it's at home or a gym. And he doesn't skimp on the difficulty. A lot of times those routines you may find online just don't challenge me the way I want them to. That's not an issue with train well. You can let your trainer know if your workout was a bit too easy and they'll adjust it so you get your butt kicked just right the next time. My favorite thing about the app though, is if I ever want to focus on a specific part of my body, I can just message my trainer in the app and biggity bam, they changed my next workout with my new focus. You don't have to be a bodybuilder to want to get the benefits of working out. Maybe you want to sweat out some stress or get stronger, but you don't know where to start. Trainwell gives you the perfect place to start your fitness journey. And the first 100 people to use my link, trainwell.net slash the food theorists, get 14 days free with your own personal expert and $25 off your first month with Trainwell. So thank you. To be fair, it's good for longevity. Mm. Keep fit, keep healthy. Train well for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about some old oil. These practices of reusing oil or food go as far as China. Traditional Chinese culture uses something called old oil or aged oil, where they keep the remaining oil of a dish to season a wok or to season a stir fry easily. But like a lot of things, this traditional practice has been modified for today's world where health and safety are more of a concern and people like to avoid dysentery whenever possible. So if other traditions have had to modernize, how are Dyer's Burgers able to keep using grease from 1912 and have it not be a health code violation. Can grease even go bad? Well, if left as it is, then the answer is simply yes. There are a number of reasons that can cause grease to go bad or become rancid if you just leave it. So let's look at all these disgusting factors together, shall we? The first one is the most straightforward, and that is temperature, like all other foods. Bacteria can grow when left at 40 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Keeping in mind, room temperature is around 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit means leaving the grease out gives bacteria the chance to grow. As they grow, they break down the food molecules, producing byproducts like acids, gases, and other compounds that could be unpleasant or even harmful for us to consume. The next thing that can make grease go bad is the leftover food particles from cooking. Some debris will likely be left in the pan, and these food particles, if left in the grease, will accelerate rancidity as, once again, these are old bits of food that harbor bacteria. But the final issue is if the grease is left out and exposed to air, not covered in a container. Doing this leads to oxidation, something you see frequently with food, whether it's an apple or avocado turning brown, or when your chicken starts to smell like a landfill. It's a simple visual, but it's a really complex series of chemical reactions between oxygen and the fats, oils, and other compounds you find in foods. Basically, oxygen in the air all around you interacts with your food's nutrients and components and starts literally changing the bonds or structures of their molecules. We breathe it in all the time, so it seems harmless, but oxygen is actually a stone cold killer. The reason this process is bad is because it can result in imparting off flavors and odors into the grease, which obviously nobody wants, but it can also degrade the nutrition value of the grease itself through these chemical reactions. The byproducts of oxidation have also been associated with health issues like inflammation and even cancer. So you really don't want your grease to oxidize. In addition to oxidation, polymerization occurs, which <laughs> is not the fusion of two monster cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, but rather Yu-Gi-Oh! the fusion of larger, more complex molecules, which can lead to the grease being even thicker with multiple C's. TLDR, if you leave the grease out in the open air at room temperature, that grease is going to go bad, and the only thing you'll be known for is the world's most rancid burgers. That said, there are several ways you can help prevent food and grease from going off as quickly, and Dyer's Burgers are doing all of them. So if you're wanting to start reusing your baking grease and want to be safe while you do it, now's the time to start taking notes. One of the things Dyer's comes out with whenever people ask if it's safe to eat is that they filter and strain their grease daily. Straining the grease, which you can do at home by using a coffee filter and a strainer, removes the food particles and debris that may still be present in the pan, which contributes to that rancidity. A word I'm going to continue to work in because it's so much fun to say. Rancidity. Anyway, removing these- Rancidity.
These particles helps reduce bacterial growth. Also, if these parts stay in the grease, they're getting cooked again, which will leave them burnt and make the whole thing taste bad. This process alone doesn't stop the grease from spoiling, but it does slow down the process. The other thing that can help the whole thing slow down is seasoning. Dyer's Burger says they use a secret seasoning in their burgers, and this in turn seasons the grease. Salt, which is typically what people use to season food, is highly effective at preserving it. It does this by drawing out the moisture of the food through osmosis, essentially drawing out all the water from the cells to the area of higher salt concentration, in this case, the surface. Dehydrating the cells like this helps prevent bacteria, molds, and yeasts from living and reproducing, which completely slows down that going bad process. When you season something with salt, it forms a crust around the food, which reduces its exposure to air, basically making a barrier between the grease and the air and stopping the oxidation process we talked about earlier. Other seasonings like garlic, oregano, rosemary, and other herbs and spices contain antioxidants, which slow down oxidation or at least inhibit the growth of bacteria. Another thing that Dyer's is doing is using the grease constantly. It hasn't just been put to one side for a hundred years and now they want to know if it tastes good. Dyer's are heating the grease up every morning ready to cook all their famous burgers, meaning they're turning up the heat to well over the point that most harmful bacteria are killed off. All in all, from a safety perspective, it seems to check every box so far. But the final thing that Dyer's does, and the point where a ship of greasiest problem comes into play, my theorists slash philosophers, is that they regularly replenish the grease. During my research into this episode, what I wondered the most was how much grease did they start with if they're using it 100 years later? You'd think it would have run out by now, but Dyer's secret seasoning makes their burgers produce even more grease. Grease that keeps perpetually adding to their original one. This kind of works in a similar way to perpetual stew. Any degraded or oxidized components in the old grease become more and more diluted when the new stuff is added. This helps maintain the overall quality and stability of the mixture. The fresh grease contains antioxidants to help prevent oxidation and keep it, well, I was gonna say fresh, but there's still one question we have left. The big claim that it's still the same grease. The current owner took it a step further and said that the grease is seasoned and filtered every day, but it still has the molecules from 1912 in the grease. The same molecules? That is a wild claim, friends. And it seems oddly specific. Being the skeptic that I am, denying vegetables, expiration dates, and even fruit punch, it's time I add another one to our list because there is no way that this has the same molecules in it. And if the molecules are different, there's no way that our ship today is the same greasiest as before. When you cook a liquid, especially on a high heat like this grease, one thing is sure to happen, evaporation. Cooking any liquid to its boiling point will result in the molecules changing from liquid to gas and evaporating. That's why if you boil a pot of water, eventually it'll just be empty after the water's turned to gas and said deuces, and grease is no different. The constant heating would mean a good deal of it is evaporating, so you're losing some of those precious molecules. One of the countermeasures I mentioned for safety was straining the grease to filter out any debris, which is good and you should definitely keep doing that, but you're likely to lose some of the OG grease because it either clings to the debris you're getting rid of or it just doesn't filter through. And speaking of grease holding onto things, the burgers that are being cooked are, of course, absorbing some of it. That's the entire concept of this burger joint. That burger tastes amazing because they're using 100 year old grease. It's holding on to that flavor, so that means some of the grease is being taken away every time they serve a burger. But if we wanted to get really scientific up in here, Dyer's is using the word molecules after all, there would be a huge amount of molecular turnover during cooking. The fat molecules are breaking down and reforming constantly in the pan, which is altering the grease's chemical composition. The repeated heating causes oxidation and polymerization, which is literally altering the molecular structure of the molecules as they react to heat or oxygen. So basically, the moment you cook the grease, it is never the same molecules again. And that's without- Oh. I like to think that Santi is actually going down to the basic, basic, basic of science touching on their method of regularly replenishing the grease. Dyer says that they add fresh grease every day, supposedly from the specially seasoned burgers that produce extra grease. This means that not only is the original evaporating, being lost, or the actual molecules themselves changing, but the new grease is also diluting the original. Every time they add new grease to it, the original is slowly becoming less and less present in the overall mixture. Now, we don't know how much they add or even how much they started with, but even just by adding a little bit of grease at a time after, say, I don't know, a hundred years, there's definitely more fresh grease than original at this point. So suck it, philosophizers. It's not the same ship. It's not the same grease. But hey, that's not the end of this. <sighs>
because Dyer's efforts aren't all for nothing. Because while sure, it's unlikely that the same molecules from 1912 are still in the grease, one thing that is certain is that this constant reusing and replenishing of grease has ensured the same flavor for over a century. We talked about how grease from food imparts some of the flavor profile. Well, if the burger is being seasoned with the grease from 1912, then the flavor profile will match the original burger. So if Dyer's have kept their seasoning the same, then that flavor of the grease should remain the same too, creating an endless cycle of repeated flavor into the grease, into the burger, into the grease, into the burger forever, just with the added benefit of an even deeper flavor. Just like how the burger on the second day way back when tasted way better by using the old grease, continually using the grease and adding more deepens the flavor every time. And finally, we get the answer to our paradox. Dyer's Burgers grease is not the same as it was in 1912, and it's definitely not the same molecules. Those weren't even the same on day two, but each time they use the grease, it levels up, getting better and better, and making the flavor all the more richer. The taste- Oh, solo leveling up might not be the same as last century, but over time, it's only gotten more complex. No wonder people ask for the entire burger to be cooked in the grease, bun and all. So there you have it, philosophists. If you want to take a page out of Dyer's book and save your grease to take your cooking to the next level, make sure you're taking the same steps as them to keep it safe. And as for our philosophical question, there is absolutely nothing from the old ship of Greasius that remains. All that's left is the soul of the grease, the flavor. And at the end of the day, if everything's changed, but it still gets you to your destination of flavor town, that's all that really matters. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And while my brain still recovers from the mental gymnastics of this paradox, I want to say thank you to Trainwell one more time for sponsoring today's episode. And remember, the first 100 people to visit my link, go.trainwell.net slash the food theorist, get 14 days free with your own personal expert and $25 off your first month with Trainwell. So thank you again, Trainwell, for sponsoring today's video. And as always, I'll see you next week. Well, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. But hey, that's just a theory, a food theory. Bon appetit. Yay! And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Subscribe. Subscribe.